It's always great to have Whitey Herzog and Willie McGee in the house, isn't it? Whitey Herzog took over as the Cardinals manager on noon, June 9th of 1980. A couple of months later, he uh, went upstairs, became the general manager. And a couple of months after that, over the space of two days, traded for two Hall of Fame closers. I, I guess those two months as the manager told you something about your ball club, huh? Well, Randy, I, I had gone uh, three times in a row through the playoffs in Kansas City. And at that time, we had a five-game uh, series with the Yankees all three years. And the winner of the three games, you know, would go to the World Series. Well, the first World Series, I mean, playoff, uh, Mark Littell was pitching. The last and ninth in a tie ball game. And the first baseman, Chamlis, hit a home run. Uh, the second year, uh, we had a 3-2 lead in the ninth in Kansas City. Uh, a couple of blue pits in, a, in there, and another blue pit, and we got beat five to three. And then the third year, we got beat in the eighth inning of the last game when Tentea Munson hit a home run. And I'll never forget the press saying to me, how comes you brought in Bird? And I said, because I didn't have Gossage. <laughs> <laughs> so here, in that... Uh, Meetings, winter meetings down in Dallas, 1980. You, one day you trade for Raleigh Fingers. The next day you trade for Bruce Souter. And for 24 hours, you had both of them. Yeah, I, I didn't know that I could get Souter. I was talking to the general manager, Bob Kennedy. And Mr. Wrigley wanted to move him out of Chicago. So I, want, I got uh, the guy from San Diego, and who I knew from the American League and knew him well. And uh, I asked him after I had both of them, I said, uh, oh, he said, me and Suter can pitch in the same bullpen. I said, let me ask you something. Two outs in the ninth inning tie ball game, man on second. I want the hitter to hit a split finger instead of your slider, Raleigh. Would you get mad if I took you out? And he said, oh, yeah. I said, well, then I'm going to trade your rear end tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Traded him to Milwaukee. And the Cardinals in 1981 had the best record in the division, but because of a strike in the split season, even though they had the best record, didn't make the playoffs. And then the next offseason, the Cardinals make the trade, Gary Templeton for Ozzie Smith and Bob Sykes for Willie McGee. Uh, did you have any idea? Did you have any idea what, were you, what you were getting into when you were traded to the Cardinals? No, I did not. I uh, thought my life was over when I, <laughs> when I got traded from the Yankees. You know, I really didn't know what was, uh, what was in front of me. Uh, I was pretty young, so, you know, getting took off the roster, um, I thought that was, a, you know, a, a bad move. But it turned out to be one of the greatest moves of my life, so, you know. It worked out well. Then you get a guy like Whitey Herzog who um, didn't miss a beat as far as how we played the game. You know, it felt like Little League out there. We just went out there and just played, and uh, he let us play. If we didn't run or steal, he, you, that's when he got mad. You look over <laughs> in the dugout, and he's like, run, run, run. He's telling you this during the game almost literally. So, yeah. And uh, that was the, the great thing about Whitey Ball in the 80s because – you recognized the advantages of playing in that big ballpark would be to utilize all the speed that you had. Yeah, we kind of assembled the guys. You know, we got Lonnie Smith, we got Willie McGee, we had Ozzie, we had her, we had Pendleton, we had Obie. Uh, even uh, Keith, I hope Keith remembers this, in 82, uh, we'd have had seven guys with over 20 stolen bases, but Keith got 19 going in in the July. He never sold it up. <laughs> I, I, was root, I was rooting for him, but he wouldn't run. He wouldn't get that <laughs> one. <laughs> Willie McGee had one of the all-time great World Series games, Game 3 in Milwaukee in 82. What do you remember about that night? I remember that I didn't know what I was into, and that was a good thing, <laughs> you know, because uh, – after the series was over, that's when you start thinking. You go, you go on trips, you go to different places, and everybody's starting to recognize you, and it's like, whoa, okay, now I realize how big of a stage that was. But during the time we were playing in the series, we didn't have time to really see what was really happening around us. So Whitey, like I said, Whitey and the veteran players kind of kept us focused on 
baseball and you know you didn't really have time to do nothing else or think about nothing else but playing baseball and, and whitey w w because we got to know these guys so well we have a tendency to forget you had two rookie starters in that rotation with lapointe and stupor you had a, a rookie center fielder uh tommy her i think was in his second year playing every day at, at second base you had a really young team yeah we did some strange things you know uh, the cardinals have hadn't won anything since 68 and uh and so anyway, you know, when we got a chance to get back in the playoffs and so forth, early in the season, I thought when we got, we traded uh, Tempe to get uh, Ozzy, I thought we had a chance. And everything kind of fell into place, but the only thing was my starting pitching. Uh, I had two guys that uh, weren't as consistent as I wanted, and I took them out of the rotation, and I put Dave LaPointe and John Stuper in. And uh, I think Dave won 10 games and Stuper won 11. Stuper ended up uh, winning two World Series games and beat Don Sutton twice. He's now the coach at Yale University if you want to send your kids to play baseball. But uh, <laughs> uh, he was a nervous guy, but he pitched well. And uh, whenever he'd ask the umpire for a different ball about five times, I figured I had to get him out of the game. That's, uh, he, he wasn't any good when he did that, you know. Uh, obviously, the Cardinals went to three World Series, but I want to talk about 85 because after Bruce Suter left as a free agent, uh, this guy said, I just got 45 games dumber, right? right? And you put together the bullpen by committee, acquired Jack Clark, and that team, people were wondering if Whitey Herzog was going to get fired, if you can imagine that. And that team wound up, once Vince Coleman came up, taking off and winning 101 games and going to the World Series. Yeah, that was a magical year. Uh, we had good starting pitching. Uh, we had lost Suter to Atlanta. Uh, we went to spring training. I had one guy on my staff in spring training that had a big league save, and that was Neil Allen. And I'd gotten in a deal with the Mets for Keith. And I had no other pitcher there that had a big league save. Well, I got Bill Campbell in a deal. He turned out to be pretty good because he had a screwball. And I ended up with the kid, the Lottie from Cincinnati, and uh, he got 19 saves. And then I hate to do this, but if I wouldn't have uh, Pendleton coming to play third base, I would have never traded Obi, but I got Ken, uh, Ken Daly for him. And that kind of set my bullpen up, and uh, uh, we really had what I would call not just a great bunch of guys, but a great defense. When you think about... Uh, Porter Ketchin and, and her Keith on first and her on second and Ozzy on short and Obi or Pendleton, both gold glovers on third, and Willie in center. Uh, the only guy that I made wear a helmet on defense was Lonnie Smith. I didn't want him to get killed. You know? <laughs> George Henrik was a gold glover too in 82. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Willie wins the MVP award in 1985. That was definitely your best year, right? Yes, it was. They hit my bat a lot that year, <laughs> but a uh, funny story about George, when we got to Bush Stadium, George called me over to right field, and he took me down to the, to the uh, first baseline in right, at right field, and he said, I want you to come here, I want you to look out here. He said, I got from this line to right there. <laughs> Anything else you got? <laughs> so about a t he had a 10-yard responsibility, he told me I had to run. <laughs> Last, uh, last quick thing, and uh, Whitey, you were, yeah, you, you, you were in a lot of clubhouses, Willie, were, uh, you were too. That team had a lot of fun in the, in the clubhouse, on the field. That was, that was a fun group. Well, you, you know, we just had a good bunch of guys, and they loved to play, and fundamentally we could play, and uh, we pitted for each other. And we, uh, it was amazing how we could run bases and how we could get jumps, but how we could make contact. Uh, uh, you know, after I came over here that first year in, in uh, 81 and 82, Keith, Keith got where he liked to hit and run. He'd say to me, how about putting on the hit and run? I said, okay, if you get the right count. But the two best hit and run guys I ever managed were Oberfeld and Keith. Man, they could really put the bat on the ball on a hit and run. But there were things they could do. We could squeeze. We could do things. But most of the guys were so good. They didn't need a manager. They needed a father once in a while to keep them in line. But uh, <laughs> hell, they could have played by themselves. <laughs> and here's, here's Willie McGee 35 years later, back with the Cardinals now as, uh, on the coaching staff. <laughs> and, 
uh, you, you really did. Willie, you, you grew up here, didn't you? In, in the 80s, you grew up here. Basically, I did. I mean, you know, but the thing is, we had a great bunch of veteran guys, and like I said, we had, you know, Whitey with his experience. Then I came up with a bunch of great veterans, Bobby Forrest, Keith, uh, Gene Tennis, uh, oh, wow, I mean, just a number of guys, uh, Bruce Souter. And, uh, you know, they would walk down back then, they would walk down up and down the dugout, and if you weren't paying attention, you would get caught because they'd come down and they'd ask you how many ounces, you know, just trying to make sure that you paying attention to the game. So that's how we learn how to, to play the game. You know, it's just to watch the game and get into the game and pull for the other players. And by doing that, it's, it's weird because you feel like all that energy that you're pulling for that guy, that other guy, you feel it, you know, you feel it going into it to work to the point of where when you're winning and you're playing good, it feel like it's just a blanket over the whole field. You don't feel like it's one piece here, one piece there, one piece here, one piece there. Thanks for all the great memories in that decade. It was unbelievable, and we appreciate it. St. Louis still loves you guys.